Hello and welcome to another episode of Career Advancement and Enhancement. Again, I am Master Chief Billy Mason, the Command Master Chief for NAS JRB New Orleans. Today's episode is going to be eval writing strategies. Um, I'm not going to sit here and go over the basics on how to fill out an eval. I'm going to give you the strategies that you need to know how to write an effective comments block, which is the the meat and potatoes of, of how evals um, get graded at selection boards. Because um, it's not how the evals filled out, it's what's said in the eval that makes all the difference. One of the first tips that I'm going to give you today is um, kind of a, uh, a spell check tip. Now, um, as most of you know, uh, NavFit 98A is spell corrected through the Microsoft Word program. So if you change your settings in Microsoft Word, you can spell check the entire document instead of just words that are not all caps. And this is a good tip for, uh, for writing award citations as well because awards are written in all caps. So spell check won't recognize them unless you make these changes. So let me walk you through how to change the settings in Microsoft Word um, so that you can uh, so that you can have the entire document spell checked. All right, and I'll give you a second to open up Microsoft Word. Step two, you can go ahead and select a blank document. Now, in the upper left corner, you select File, and you'll get a drop-down menu. Go ahead and select File. The next option that you're going to select from the File drop-down menu is proofing. All right, now after you've select proofing from the drop down menu, go ahead and look at the options. You should see a check mark in the block where it says words in uppercase. What I want you to do is click on that check to deselect it. So the blank should the box should be blank when you click on the check for words in uppercase. And that's really all you have to do. You're now ready to edit a document where it has words in all caps and spell check will recognize that it took me a long time to figure that out believe it or not but uh, I had a uh, I had a former commanding officer that showed me that and it's been an invaluable tool for me um, and remember sailors always 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 spell check and validate your evals by using the tools that are in the program so so when you have now navfit 98a open you click on tools, the drop down menu has two options, spell check and validate. I encourage you to use both of them. All right, now let's get into the meat of an eval, which is the comments on performance, okay? It starts with, with your opening. Every eval should have a strong opening because as a uh, selection board member, I can tell you, you only get 18 lines to wow me. So you better start it off right at the beginning because I honestly don't have a lot of time to analyze and dissect each eval. I've only got a very short time to review a record. So you better, you gotta wow me up front. So your eval opening, if it's other than a regular report, you're gonna use one line to say something like, the report submitted upon members transfer to the USS Never Dock and then where, wherever it's at, Bucks North, Tennessee, I don't know. But uh, that's, completely made up, but that's what you're going to use if it's other than a regular report. Now, if it's a regular report, you've got two lines of fluff. That's two lines to brag about yourself and, and tell the selection board that you're the best thing since sliced bread, okay? And it's, and it's, think of it as coming from the mouth of your CO. So, because this is your CO's comments on your performance, you're just signing it, okay? So um, when you're going to brag about your brag about yourself, brag about your performance and your character. Okay, um, use action words like motivated, self-starting, natural leadership ability, um, best I've seen, things like that. Okay, so keep that in mind. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the one to four word kind of chopped sentence that sets up the bullet. It's called a superlative. Now your superlative is going to be in all caps and it's like I said one to four words. 
and that is the the what's going to set up your bullet so it should say like um for instance if you're an ls your entire career is about being meticulous and efficient so why not put that in your first bullet boom meticulous and efficient in all caps period then you set up the bullet um uh you know, orchestrated a budget of so many millions of dollars with zero flaws as evidenced on my most recent inspection. That's a fantastic bullet, okay? Um, had, a, had zero discrepancies on last budget audit, things like that. Now that's just for LSs. Each, each rate will have something specific to it, all right? Um, another one for um, E5 and above that they need to think about natural leadership. If I don't see leadership coming uh, right after that eval opening, I'm going to go, blah, this is not a leader and we are promoting leaders. So be sure to, to input that leadership ability. If you're having an issue thinking of good superlatives, I want to suggest the Navy eval writing guide. Yes, even master chiefs like me get writer's block every now and again. Uh, this is a fantastic tool. I've had, um, I have a couple of copies of these. So here you are under top performers uh, bullets. It'll say like exceptionally proficient, progressed beyond expectations, uh, astounding success. Those are great action words that you would want to use to set up your bullet. Uh, here's, another, here's another fantastic one. Leadership inspires respect and devotion. Um, action words that really reach out and grab that selection board's attention. Okay? Now, when you're writing the actual bullet after the superlative, you need to be explanatory. You need to have a cause and effect, and it has to have an impact. Let me give you an example. Um, Debt LPO, who led 31 sailors supporting 79.8 mishap-free adversary hours and the completion of 76 out of 77 sorties. Okay, you heard a lot of numbers in there, you heard a lot of cause and effect, and you had that leadership bullet in there because you were the debt LPO that led a team of sailors supporting a successful detachment. Okay, so think like that often. Everything that you do, everything that you write needs to have a cause and effect. It has to have an impact. All right. Now, the next, the next thing that you have to be wary of is you should be able to write your eval um, and prioritize your bullets, okay? You don't want the least um, impactful statement to be right after your opening statement. You need to wow me. Like I said, you only have 18 lines, and you have to capture my attention. So I like to prioritize them like this. You start out with, how did your effort impact the Navy as a whole? So I'll, you know, um, that debt that I uh, talked about in the, in the last statement, that debt was for the Navy, right? We're training pilots. That has a Navy-wide effect. Because of that debt, pilots for the Navy were trained in the adversary mission. The next thing you need to talk about is what was the impact on the command, all right? So Navy first, then your command. And, and the impact you made on your command include your collateral duties. I'm here to tell you, if you have a collateral duty on the front page of your eval, you better have something on the back explaining what you did with it, or a selection board will be like, you didn't do anything with it, okay? Here's a little tip for you. Every single collateral duty out there involves training of some type. There has to be annual training given to the command. Why not mention it? All right. Provided 10 hours of sapper training to the command. Um, uh, we had no reportable uh, sexual assault offenses or we had we gave five hours of DAPA training. Um, to at-risk sailors, and uh, we had no incidents of, of uh, drug or alcohol uh, in our command. Something impactful like that. You did something, provided training. The impact was the command had no reportable offenses. Think like that. So after what you've done with the command, now you start talking about what have I done for my sailors, okay? 
because of my leadership. Um, two sailors were sailors of the quarter, junior sailor of the quarter, three of them got NAMs, um, uh, five of them enrolled in college, two of them got their, you know, their bachelor's degrees, associate degrees. I'm sure you can follow me with that, but what have you done for your sailors? You got how many qualified in position, that's big, remember that. Uh, how many, not just your success, but how many of your junior sailors are you bringing with you? How many are sharing in your success as you're sharing in their success? Okay, remember that. After that, then you could start talking about what have you done for the community. If you have room left over, then you can talk about, um, you know, being the president of a homeowners association. You could talk about being a coach of a sports team, things like that, if you have room. If you don't, then you can go below the comments block and put it in there. Um, but, you know, if there's room to put it in there, put it in the comments. Um, and the last, the last thing that you're going to have for your eval is the closing statement. The closing statement is your last chance to wow me. All right? You want to talk about your future potential. And you want to talk about why the Navy needs you and what you do. Why are you so important to the Navy and why we need to keep you. All right, well, listen, I hope I've been able to help all of you out because um, I know in the long run, the better eval writers you are, the less writing I have to do for you. So I appreciate your, uh, your time and attention. And uh, as always, uh, good luck. We got the exam coming up in March, and I hope you're all studying hard. All right, I'm signing off for now. It's Master Chief Billy Mason, NASJRB, and uh, I want to see everybody advance. Thank you.